Welcome to Learn and Flutter. And today we're going to be looking at a container widget. And so we're still in section four, Flutter Basic, and this is going to be part five. So one of the things I want to draw your attention to is that I'll be trying to make videos more, post videos more often. And in order to do that, I have to be able to save time somewhere. I usually spend a lot of time um, editing the videos. And that is so that I make them as short as possible so they don't waste your time. However, in order for me to post video more frequently, so for someone who's trying to learn Flutter, doesn't have to wait so long between videos, um, what's just gonna happen is that you're gonna notice that the videos might have some repetition. If I make a mistake, I'll just redo it. If something is really, really long, then I'll go edit that to speed it up again to help you out with the time. But other than that, um, the video quality might be not as good as before. I mean, I'm not, my intention is not to make worse videos. The content is still going to be the same is in order for me to be able to post more videos. I cannot spend time just going over every nitty gritty thing and cutting it out and editing. So I um, just wanted to let you know. So with that said, expecting videos to be minimally edited, and hopefully if I can really save some time on the editing, then I can post videos more frequently, at least once a week. Well, I think that's going to be a plus. So let's jump in. Um, so today, like I said, we're working on containers and the container widget. Now, from the outset, I want to say this, how the container widget is sort of weird. And you're going to see that in this video. Um, but towards the end, I'll try and leave on a slightly lighter note by showing you something else. So stick around. All right, so let's start off by, so we're in our directory here, Flutter for um, Flutter Basics, part um, section four. So let's make a directory for part five or example. I went over that um, several times while I'm doing it this way. And notice I've created an empty directory and then now I can type Flutter, create, and then dot. And what this does is it's really cool because if there was, an, there was already a project in this directory for a project, and I deleted some of the files or anything like that, I could just rerun the create command and it would um, detect the missing files and recreate it. But since the directory is empty, well, it just created everything. Okay, so I'm already in the directory, so there's no CD into anything. I, I already have my simulator going there. And so I'll start my visual code editor. And we'll start with main as usual. And for this example, what I'll do is I'll delete all of this. And so all we have now is this run app that expects a widget called my app. So let's create that. Okay, that's satisfied my application. And now I should be able to run it. And notice that I have I, my widget is built with a container. So that's great. And that's what we're looking at today, the container widget. So let, let this get started here. And then we'll see. So there's one place where I'll speed up thing a little bit. Okay, our app loading, and you can see it's just a blank, a black screen actually. So let's see what we can do. So if we hover over container, we see that oh, there's several, let me do this again. There's several properties that we can pass the constructor. We can ignore key, we'll ignore alignment, edge and set, you know, padding, we can do that. Um, but there's color, decoration and so on, box, box constraint with and what's not even a child so a container can have a child so let's start off with color let's see if we can change this from black to something else so we'll say color uh, wrong place color and let's do colors that and let's do maybe something like amber that's right there okay and let's save this and as you can see we change it to this color and if you over over there you should see um some of the color amber this amber that so um but here we go, um, this yellow, uh, mustard yellow or something like that. But at least we can see it how this container takes over the entire screen. So let's play with it. What about those width that we saw just now? So we saw that though you can specify a width and we'll specify a width of let's say 480 and width is a double value. And so I can also specify height and let's call it maybe 620 for example and save that and let's see what happens 
and we're not sure. At least our container size didn't change. Hmm, what's going on here? Well, let's do this. Maybe the width and the height doesn't affect the container size itself, but maybe it's used to affect the child of the container. So let's put another container as the child of this container. So let's do um, container and we'll also give this guy a color. And so we say colors that colors is that red, for example, and let's save it. And hmm, this is not what you would expect at all. It seems like we have our new container that completely um, expands the fill it parent. And so our width and height here has no effect whatsoever. Huh, interesting. Okay, what about we specify width and height and diffs container? So we go width and maybe what we would like to do is let's store these in variables. So we say variable w is equals to 480 and then var height is equals to 620. And then maybe we can do something like width here is divided by two is half of that guy. And height is h divided by two. And we can save that. We can even change this to be w and this to be, and this to be h and again our container here and our program is refreshing so we can do it if we like but we can see from the bottom that it was refreshing and yeah with our red container it, which is within our amber container but somehow the red container it still has um expanded into the full size of its parent so this is one of those things that is really funny about the container widget. So remember that alignment property? So if we do alignment, we use this alignment class and this property of the alignment class called like center, for example, what we're doing is we're telling this container, the Amber container, that it should align its children to the center of it. And once we do that, then the red container respects its size. And we may not know yet all the reasons for this, but basically the container widget is sort of really weird. It's a complex widget actually. It looks very easy to use. And in some situation is very easy to use, but you should be aware of some of its quirk. So I went to flutter.dev, then I click on docs, and I'm gonna to go to widget index here and I'll scroll down, let me zoom in a bit more and I'll scroll down to container. So da, 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 da. and where's container? There we go, keep going, keep going, container. Here's container. I click the documentation and why is this still so small? Okay, and you're gonna say, it. you see from the documentation it says, is a convenient widget that combines common painting, positioning, and sizing widgets. It seems like it's doing at least three things, right? It's it's combining painting widget, position widget, and sizing widgets. A container first surrounds the child with padding, and we saw the padding property, and then inflated by any border present in the decoration, we saw the decoration property. And so if you go through this, um, you'll see all the things and the different ways in which these those properties that you can pass that container affect how it layout itself and how it layouts its child. And this is the key thing for me here is this. Since container contain combines a number of other widgets, each with their own layout behavior, container's layout behavior is somewhat complicated. That makes sense because it's trying to do multiple things. And so to get an idea of what it's really doing, if you look at the summary here, on the how it lay it layout layout behavior we will see this container in summary container tries in the following order to honor alignment so that's what we see we had to specify in order for it to say my child needs to be in the center or left or right or start or whatever top or bottom but only then when it's taken to account the alignment then it sort of enforces any constraints on its child and then to the size so it's in order, it tries to honor alignment, to size itself to the child, to honor 
the width and height and constraints to expand to fit the parent and to be as small as possible. Now, what might be confusing is that if it's doing it in this order, when we specify width and height, it should have honored those before trying to expand to fit its parent, right? Like, you know, our little red container, we give it a height and width, but it didn't honor those. It seemed to expand it first to fit its parent. But then we had to use alignment on the parent to get the child to be the small size. If you were confused, don't worry. That is exactly what I'm showing you. And I'm telling you that how I feel that the container widget, while looks pretty simple to use, and in some cases it's easy to use, that it can also be um, a little bit confusing as to all the different ways in which it um, it does its layout. And these are all the condi conditions. So more specifically, you can go through and see when it operates in a certain way or try to lay out a certain way, okay? And so for, for us, what we really want to take away from it is this, this widget called a container. Um, you can easily specify a color to it. You can give it width and height. You can even do things like padding. Um, but you also have to be careful of when it's going to respect those constraints and how. And so, for example, if I remove this alignment, you'll see, just as before, our inner container is going to expand and fill its parent. But what if I wrap this container in another widget that enforces some form of alignment? Well, that would be a center widget. A center widget essentially operates like our container did just now for its child, where the center widget is saying, my child needs to be in the center. Just like when we put a line center on our yellow container, it's saying to its child, I need you to be in the center. And so now notice once I wrap my yellow container in a center widget, well, it forces it to have a smaller size. So let me do this 400. Let's make, make this a little bit smaller. And let's make this maybe um, 400. And so, um, Notice how, yeah, let's do even smaller. So 300, 300. And so notice how um, now our container is respecting the size because it's in a center widget. But the inner container, the red one, is still expanding to the max of its parents. If I want the inner container to respect the size, I have to tell the, its parent that, oh, you know what, you should center your child. And then that forces the inner container. <laughs> like, is, does this seem weird? Now, at this moment, I can really rant a bit because I do not like when things have these many different ways of operating. Like, I like things to be really simple and straightforward, orthogonal in a way. That like, this is one of the things I like with Flutter is most of the, the widgets they do one thing and do one thing well, and then you could combine them. Okay, so you have a pattern widget, you have a center widget. It tells you exactly what it's gonna do. But this container widget is one that seems to break that contract and just doing multiple things. And it says it's in a documentation. So it's good that it's documented. But if they already have widgets that do painting, positioning, and sizing, why combine all of those into one widget? Well, I'm um, not going to worry about it, but I just wanted to rant a little bit about that. Um, but I wanted to show you um, how this, this, con this widget behaves. But there are some nice things that you can get very easily if you are aware of this. So for example, um, one of the things we can do, so let me um, go back and say, um, so you remember we had padding widget before? So let's select our center widget, and then we'll say replace with children, with its children, and that's what will give us back our yellow container. And so what we can do is now wrap it in a padding widget like this, and it should push it in, push in that container a little bit. So you can imagine a black area is the padding widget and the padding widget is going to sort of grow to force the container to be a bit smaller, but it doesn't do any alignment. So in that way, it, the container still is expanding to be as big as it can be. That's why our yellow widget is still sort of pretty big. So now that we've played with this, let's do, let me show you some simple things that you can actually do with a container and it sort of behave like you would expect. Um, so we have this inner container, this red container. And for example, we can put like some text in that red container. We can say we have child, we can say we have text. 
and we can put some text and we can say hello for example and then we know that oh, we need text direction uh, text direction we can do text direction we can do left to right and let's save that um, we can also do style and do text style and then we want color or we can do colors that green maybe and then let's see font size and let's do 32 okay and so with this there you can see my hello um, maybe let's make it black and you can see hello is at the top of top left of my red container but I can also do alignment on this container and say that oh, I want this to be aligned bottom left or bottom right for example and that's where its child which is this text could be aligned so you can still have some really nice control and this is where the positioning part of it this is where the container is doing positioning because there's actually a position widget that we can look at that's going to allow you to do essentially the same thing you can wrap up any widget and then just say where should it be positioned and so um still knowing that you can do this with a container i guess it's still sort of cool now we can do something like this we can say so let's sort of peel back the onion here and so i'll cheat a little bit by clicking on this and then say replace with child click on this say replace with child with children and then on this guy say replace with children um, well no actually i don't want to say replace with children there i'm going to get rid of this child which is the text box i'll leave this um as it is so all i have now i'll take out the alignment so all i have is a simple container in this case it's red and there's some width um but let me hard code this value to something like i don't know 40 .0, and let's do 40.0 and then now i can get rid of this what i want to do is a list of colors so let's say i have colors and it's a list but it's parameterized on colors on color and again if you hold this over here you can see a list of colors and so uh, let's do one more so the colors that um yellow maybe all right so what are, what can i do here so remember we said that um we have containers and by default it without any alignment it would just simply um you know expand and fill its parent so what if we want to have several containers of this size um, on our screen now we can decide if we want to lay them out going across the screen or down the screen so let's wrap our container in a column for example we'll choose to put it going down the screen and now we can say that um notice our container now because it's within a parent that enforces alignment notice the container size it respects its size now so now it's you know all the way up to the screen there very very small um, maybe we can change this to 60 or something and maybe it would be a slightly bigger you can barely see it up at the top there but that's cool we know how to have to, to create multiple oh let's do something let's do major al access alignment at that alignment major access alignment no not here wrong place major access alignment so major access alignment let's do space evenly space around let's do something like that and so there we go it's up here on our screen but now let's add a few more containers so i'll cheat a little bit in terms of how i create my containers and if you remember what we can do is we can say for example that we have let's 
So let's do this. So we have a far. Let's call them boxes equals equals to colors that map. And then if you remember, this is a function that takes each color and then return a new type. So that can be a widget. So for us, we can say we take a color and we return fat arrow. If I can get the fat arrow going, come on, keyboard. Are you kidding me? It in the equal to shift key too fast. So fat arrow and we want to return container. So we want to return this guy. And so we can stick it here. Cut, paste it here. So that's what we would like to return. And so semicolon at the end of this. And we know we want this to be a list. So the child here, children will just be boxes. We would already have our list of containers. And so right now, boxes is just an iterable. But that doesn't work, so we need it to be convert this map to a list. And so there we go. And now we have five red containers. But since we're passing in the color here, we'll just use C. And so that's all there is to it. And now we have some nicely colored boxes. And of course, we can easily change the size. I mean, we don't have to use a fixed size, you can say var w is equals to 80, var h is equals to 85, or oh, so sorry, let's make our width. So maybe this is 80, and our width um, is probably 100, something like that. And now we can just use w and h. And then once we save, we should see our container adjust. And that's nice. Now, this might not seem too exciting, but maybe you want to do something and you can load containers really quickly, um, like this way. The other thing you can do is wrap this in an inkwell, and now you can have these box that are clickable. We're not going to do that now. We'll look at that later, because in order to use an inkwell, we need some other widgets, parent widgets, um, a material widget, essentially. And so we're not going to do that right now, but it's fairly easy to do. Now, I did say that oh, I don't want to make this video too long. And of course, I'm trying to minimize editing. So um, the quicker I can make these videos, the more videos I can put out. So here's the last thing I wanted to show you. So we have our application here and it's running on a simulator. And we know it always can run equally well, just as this like this on a actual device. So let's go back to Flutter Dev. And I want you to click on Docs. And if you scroll down to da 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 da, let's see, is it under deployment? There we go. And you can see build and release a web application. You click on this. Um, okay, no, no, that's not it. That's not it. Um, let's see, getting started. Ah, there we go. Click on getting started and then click on building a web application. And if you click on this and you go through, you will see, notice this warning. If you do not have Flutter tool installed, do the regular installation. But since you're doing Flutter already, you already have this installed. You can just click copy code and you can paste it. And what this is going to do is change your Flutter channel. It's going to upgrade your Flutter to 1.9, which is the most recent release of Flutter. And then um, it's going to configure your Flutter to always enable web application. What it means is that when you build, create a new Flutter application, notice I have this web directory there. I didn't have to do anything. It's, it's already come just like by the Android and iOS before. No web is added. Now Flutter has been, um, the Flutter team has been working on making the same code base work not only on Two different mobile platforms you know android and ios but also for the web and also for desktop i haven't looked at how to do desktop yet i don't think they've integrated the desktop yet but for web this was added in standard flutter as of version 1.9 
That's what I'm showing it to you. You don't have to do anything special like before. You had to have two different code bases and so on. You don't have to do it. The code base has been unified. So what this means now is once you have this and you go into an existing project directory, once you run this step, go into an existing project directory. Remember what I told you about when you run Flutter Create. If you run Flutter Create in an existing project, including any that we have done before, it will update and add the missing file. And because you turn on and say enable web application, it will update it to be a web application and also upgrade it to be in Flutter 1.9. And then this is how you can run it on a web browser by doing run Chrome. But, and of course you can build it for the web so you can deploy it. But I'll show you a slightly different way. We can of course do it from the command line, but what I'll do is I'll stop here and then I'll select my device and you should see Chrome web as a device and I'll select that and I'll do the same thing that we've done before and say Bill. Um, we'll have to wait a little bit just as before. So I'll speed this up. Um, that is the same application running, but look at this. And on the device, the default background for the client area was black, but on the web, it's white, but notice it's our same application. As a matter of fact, let me move this over a little bit like this and let me squeeze this down so we can see and so we can change the width we can do some of the same thing we were doing before we could make this 100 by 100 and so now we should get some square boxes and we'll see it how it's going to update and you can see it just changed live there um, the other thing we can do we can say we want it to look like our mobile version instead of having a white background having a back black background and we know how to do that well, we just have to wrap our, our, um, our column in a container and set the color to be, so let's wrap this in a container, wrap in container, and we can set the background to be black. So let's see, color, colors that black and because our container doesn't have any parent that is enforcing a size well or any alignment then we know already that how the container will expand to the client area which is whatever the device area is if it's a device or in this case the web browser so now this look exactly like our mobile application so that's what I wanted to show you is just how easy it is now to do web application. And if you follow those steps that I just showed you from now on, pretty much all our application should work. Now, UI wise, it will display, but there's still some things that don't work. Um, it, we'll get into that as we go along. We'll try and figure out maybe if we can learn both web and mobile at the same time. That seems to make sense. So for when something doesn't work for the web, things like videos and music and playing sound and so on don't quite work or taking pictures don't quite work the exact same way with that said i don't want to make this video any longer i'm going to try and post this as quickly as possible let me know what you think about um spending less time editing and sort of just you know posting the videos sort of as they are um what do you prefer oh one of the other, other thing is thanks to you guys and the number of viewers and subscribers I have, I can now enable add on the videos. Um, for some people, they might hate seeing add on the videos, but the ad revenue would help me. It's not a lot. It's probably pennies, literally pennies, but who knows over time it might turn into something. And then that would give me the option to be able to do even more videos more frequently. Um, and so, um, if you can bear the ads, please do. Uh, what I've done is I've set it so that it's overlaid and at the beginning of the videos, but not within the video. So you shouldn't see any video that's broken and to show you ad in the middle because I hate that myself. So I don't want to do that to you guys. Um, with that said, please, please, please spread the word. And um, if you're looking at this and you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified. All right. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.